Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 13th of March and it's pretty chilly here in Texas. As always, this is useful. Please go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified of new content. Also, as always, I do have the chapters below so you can jump to a particular update you may care about more than others. New videos this week. I did a deep dive about Azure Bastion, that managed jump box service. So I went through some detail there. And then I also created a video understanding the difference between the control plane and data plane in Azure and how that can affect permissions we have, locking resources. So it's just something useful to be aware of. In terms of new features on the compute side, so Azure Backup now has support for trusted launch virtual machines. So with the new Gen 2 virtual machines in Azure that uses UEFI instead of BIOS based, I can have that virtual TPM, a trusted platform module. Now when I have that Gen 2 and I have that virtual TPM, it lets me have things like secure boot. That gives me that guarantee from the UEFI to the start of the operating system boot. There's no rootkit sitting in between there. We have things like virtualization-based security, VBS, for secure isolated bits of memory that I can run certain processes in. So it's all part of this Azure Trusted Launch feature. Well, now when I have those virtual machines using Trusted Launch, I can still protect them with Azure Backup. And then Azure Site Recovery now supports capacity reservations. So remember, capacity reservations let me say, hey, I want to have this capacity available of this type of virtual machine in this region. And I start paying for it straight away. And then when I create a VM or a VM scale set, I can say I want to create against that capacity. I, it's just guaranteeing it's going to be there when I want to actually provision start those resources. One of the really useful purposes of that might be for DR. Hey, if there is a disaster and I have to fail over, this resource absolutely must be able to start. I don't want to risk a capacity issue stopping it starting. Well, Azure Site Recovery is a replication of a virtual machine's disk. Then in a failover, I would start the VM. So what I can say as part of that ASR is I want this to use a capacity reservation in that target region. And at time of actually turning on that ASR, I can create a capacity reservation group that will reserve me that capacity. Remember, I do start paying for that capacity as soon as I create the capacity reservation. On the storage side, this has actually been out a little while, but I can create a free Azure Data Explorer cluster. Remember, Azure Data Explorer is this huge log and telemetry ingestion service that I can then run those Custo queries against. So I can do this massive data analysis. It powers things like log analytics. Well, now I can actually go to aka.ms Custo free and I get a free cluster. I don't need an Azure subscription. I don't need a credit card. I need an Azure AD account or Microsoft account. And I can basically go and play with this. It gives me about 100 gigabytes of storage. In fact, we can actually go and look at what it gives us. So what is this start for free cluster? And it says, hey, look, from a storage perspective, 100 gigabytes, 10 databases, 100 tables per database, columns, materialized view, so basically I can just start playing around with it and then it goes into the actual features that are available. So there's no real downside with this. This is just something to help, hey, I'm interested in this technology. I wanna look around, but I don't wanna spend any money. So I don't need a subscription or anything else. I can just go and start playing with this. Then on the database side, so Azure Purview, remember Azure Purview is that huge, fantastic ability to see all of my data estate in the cloud, on premises, gives me things like lineage. What is the, the history of any particular piece of data? So it now supports dynamic lineage against Azure SQL database. So what is dynamic lineage? The same called static lineage. I can imagine I had maybe just two separate tables and I did uh, a, a simple join well, I can very easily work out the lineage of where this new table came from. Hey, I joined those two tables. 
But now imagine I had data that was maybe the result of a script, of a stored procedure, dynamic SQL, some condition like an if-then. Triggers. It's a lot harder to now work out well, what is the lineage, the history of any particular piece of data. So what Azure Purview does with this is that Azure Purview data map capability hooks into the SQL engine instrumentation and extracts the runtime logs. So now I do get that view of the complete lineage of data in Azure SQL database, even if it was those more complex paths um, through that interaction. So that's pretty cool. Miscellaneous, I can now get a scheduled email of my cost analysis. So if we jump over to the portal quickly, let's go and have a look at this. So Azure cost analysis is super useful for understanding, hey, what am I spending? Well, here you can see I got an email sent to me showing me a particular view from Azure cost analysis. So the way we do this is we have to save a view. So if I went actually to my cost and I went to my cost management and then I go to my cost analysis, remember we can customize the view we have. So I need to get a certain view that I want emailed to me and then I have to save it. So I hit that kind of save button. Now once I've saved it, what I can then do is hit this subscribe button. So actually what I'll do is I'll just, let me save my default view. This is one I, I saved before. And notice now I have this subscribe button is available to me. So you have to save a view. This is what you want emailed to you. Then under subscribe, I can go and add a subscription. I give it a name. I give it who I'm emailing it to a start date, an end date, and a frequency. So I can configure, hey, I want it daily. I want it monthly. I have some custom, so I can configure how often it sends it to me. But then it will actually go and whatever I've configured as this view, and I can have multiple subscriptions to various different views, it will then go and send me that email. And so it's pretty nice uh, to be able to do that. So moving on, that is preview, by the way. Uh, Chaos Studio, remember Chaos Studio is all about the idea of introducing faults so I can see how my application, my service would behave. So now Azure Chaos Studio has support for both Key Vault and classic cloud services. So I can introduce faults around those as part of my experiment that I create in my experiment designer and see what happens if, hey, for some reason, I can't interact with that in the normal way. So I can do that now. Azure AD Advisor is in preview. So Azure AD Advisor is really Azure Advisor, as the name suggests, but for Azure AD. So I would go to my Azure Active Directory, preview features, it is in preview right now, and we have this Azure AD recommendations. So I need to turn that feature on, which I've done. Again, I'm going to preview features under my Azure AD tenant. And then once you turn that on, I now get this recommendations tab in the overview pane. So I'm in my overview menu. And then it's just gonna give me certain recommendations about my Azure AD. So things I can focus on to try and improve my overall Azure AD posture. So, you can go and give that a play. Defender for Cloud, Google. So Defender for Cloud is really designed to be more than just cloud posture for Azure. They already have AWS support in preview. Now they have Google Cloud Platform as well, GCP. So I can add a GCP project and have that projected into my view of my overall um, cloud posture. Um, I get recommendations, there's lots of them based on various compliance standards. I get protection. All we need is read access to that Google um, Cloud Platform environment. It's gonna go and scan that periodically. I can add additional protection for things like virtual machines via integration with Azure Arc and containers. But 
Hey, I can just go and add that via environments right now in Defender for Cloud. That was the old Azure Security Center name. So Defender for Cloud now, so across my hybrid clouds, be it Azure or AWS or Google, I can now leverage and get those recommendations and that security posture for my overall environment. And then Azure Stack Edge Pro 2 is released. Remember, the whole idea of Azure Stack Edge is it sits in my on-premises environment. Azure normally is a cloud, it runs in regions. There's always a certain latency between where I am and maybe my equipment and that cloud. Well, maybe sometimes I need a really, really low latency. Maybe it's got some sensors, it's doing some uh, cognitive service to detect a safety issue or something. I can't afford 20, 30 milliseconds of latency. But I wanna use Azure, but I want the services on-premises. So Azure Stack Edge runs on my premises. It's a box, but it lets me manage it through regular Azure and certain services are available to run on it. I think about things like IoT Edge, Kubernetes, containers, VMs, and I can use Azure Arc on top of that Kubernetes, so then I get app services, data services, cognitive services, all those things we're adding with Azure Arc as well. It adds a storage gateway, so I can have shares on the device that then go and send it to actual Azure Cloud storage. There's SKUs with different amounts of RAM, there's SKUs with different amounts of temporary storage, there's SKUs with different GPUs in them. They all have 32 virtual CPUs and dual 10 gigabit per second and dual 100 gigabit per second networking. And it's just a monthly consumption charge. I pay for this monthly against my Azure subscription, but it sits on premises to have that super low latency workload. So there's this nice Pro 2 version. And that was it. So as always, I hope this is useful. And until the next video, stay warm and uh, take care.